Okay, so let's begin our today's class. Huh? Today we are going to look into tutorial 12, the last tutorial, the part two of the balance of payments and exchange rates. So our focus is still on exchange rate itself. Okay, this part, exchange rate, part two. So remember, we, we mentioned that uh, there are three uh, flows. Like for example, first of all, we have a trade flow. That means, for example, we uh, demand or supply of the foreign currency because we wanted to buy imports and exports. And there's capital flow due to the uh, interest rate differentials. Okay, because the interest rate differential, sometimes you want to put your money in different banks that offer different interest rates. So therefore, um, you demand a supply of the foreign currency because of capital flow. And last one is speculative flow. That means uh, you look in, you, you speculate, okay? You predict the future value of the currency itself. Okay, so therefore that will also be, uh, influence the demand and supply of the foreign currency. Okay, now let's have a look into the question. Question one. It's really hard. Let me sit here. Okay. Using the foreign exchange market framework, illustrate what happens to the supply and demand of the foreign exchange market of US dollars in India, okay? So here, today, the country that we look into is India, okay? Assume that US dollar is expected to appreciate. So now, let's say Indians, okay, they expect that the US dollar is going to appreciate. So this is a bit of speculation, prediction. Okay, so this is about speculative flow of the currency, okay, speculative flow, what we call as speculation. Okay, so therefore, what happened here is, okay, if US dollar is expected to appreciate, what will happen? Let's draw it in the uh, diagram. So today we look into US dollars in India. So we see from Indian perspective, means what? So later on, I'm going to label as uh, rupee because the currency that India is doing is rupee. So rupee slash US dollars. Okay, that's the unit itself. Okay, so let's try to draw the diagram. It's question one. Huh? Okay, question one. Okay. So first of all, you have y-axis, you have x-axis, origin. So this is rupee per US dollars, okay? So whatever here is on the x-axis, quantity of US dollars, okay? So you have demand for US dollars and supply of US dollars. Now, what's the question again? We say that US dollar is expected to appreciate, okay? So first of all, we give some values here first. This is initial point, point A, let's say 84, okay? 84 rupees per US dollars at this quantity. So now, US dollars is going to appreciate. So people will demand more for US dollars, right? So therefore, demand for US dollars will rise. So demand shift rightwards from point A to point B, for example, okay, to this quantity and to this amount. So 83 rupees per US dollars right now. Hey, sorry, 83, uh, 85. So let's see, let me just follow the number here. See, I think he, he she labeled wrongly. Okay, so it should be 85 here. Okay, so here, yeah, I think she labeled wrongly already. So we use this one, uh, we use this labeling. Okay, 85 rupees per US dollars. That means now Indians will have to use more rupees to actually uh, demand each of the US dollars. Their currency appreciates already. Okay, now at the same time, there could be secondary impact as well. Like for example, US people, they will not supply too much of US dollars to the market as well. So the supply of US dollars will decrease. So it can be shown from this supply curve. Okay. Supply curve will shift leftwards. 
to point C. Okay, so back to this quantity, for example. Okay, so now you can see they need to use more rupees to buy each US dollars. Okay, so therefore, one thing we can conclude over here is that, okay, uh, rupee depreciates. That means more rupees are needed to buy each US dollars and US dollar appreciates. Okay, so that's the outcomes of question number one. Okay, so you can see that more and more rupees are needed to buy each US dollars. Okay, question number two. Okay, question number two. So just now, uh, the quantity depends on how you draw. Uh, because here, my shift or demand and supply curve are by the same extent. So therefore, my quantity goes back to here. As you can see, it goes back to this quantity. Right? It depends on how you draw. Maybe your quantity is somewhere here or somewhere here. It doesn't matter. The quantity doesn't matter. But the most important is you can see that the rupees, okay, it depreciates. You need to use, Indians need to use more and more rupees to buy HUS dollars. Okay. Now, next question. Question two. Indian goods become cheaper. Okay. So, Indian goods become cheaper. So, this is something to do with the trade flow. Something to do with the exports and imports. Okay. So, since Indian goods become cheaper, so what happened is their yeah, exports will become more, so higher demand for their exports. Okay, higher demand for their exports. Okay, people will buy their exports. Okay, and therefore, there's no need for Indian people to import also because their local products become cheaper already. Okay, so even Indian people, okay, even Indians, okay, will prefer to buy domestic goods as well, okay? So therefore, how are you going to show this in the diagram? Okay, so first of all, remember the unit. As long as you get the unit right, then usually you will derive the right answers, okay? So like for example, remember we say that we our unit is rupees per US dollars, this one. Okay, so let's try and draw this. Question two. Okay, so y axis, x axis. How much of rupee per US dollars is the origin? This is the quantity of US dollars. So, therefore, since everything is about US dollars, we will draw our demand and supply curve based on US dollars. Okay, so at first it's at this point A, again, we give some figures. Let's say at first we start with, let's say, 85, okay, at this quantity. Now, remember we say that Indian products become cheaper. So that means foreigners will buy their products, right? So like, for example, U.S. people want to buy Indian's product. So U.S. people will need to supply U.S. dollars, correct? So therefore, since this one we draw US dollars, okay, so therefore, okay, the supply of US dollars will increase because they need to buy the Indian products. So you need to be able to see this way. If not, you will get the whole thing is wrong already. Okay, so supply of US dollars increases because they want to buy Indian products. Okay, so now it becomes this quantity and active form. Okay? So now you can see Indian rupees appreciate a bit already. Okay? And Indian doesn't need to buy so much of imports anymore. So they will not demand so much of US dollars. They, need to, they, do, they don't need to import so much from imports anymore. So the secondary impact is, okay, the demand for US dollars will decrease as well. Okay? So now end up at point C here. Again, 
Doesn't matter where is your quantity, okay? Most importantly is you must be able to show the value here. Now it becomes 83, for example. So you can see that the price of rupee for each US dollar getting lower and lower. So one thing you can see here is rupee appreciates. Now they use less Indian rupees to buy each US dollars. Various US dollars depreciates. Each US dollars will buy less and less Indian rupee. Okay? You must really be able to analyze like this. Huh? So usually, if you get the values right, the units right, okay, then you will never make mistake. Usually, students make mistake when the they, when they get the first thing wrong, that the whole thing gone. Uh, the unit is soft. Like you must know, okay, we draw the graph like this. So this is Indian market. So we interpret like this, how much Indian rupee per US dollars. So therefore, your demand, your demand and the supply are all about US dollars. Okay. So therefore, in the question number two, you can see the price of rupees needed to buy each US dollars getting less and less. Okay. Okay, yeah, move on. Uh. Next question. Okay, question three. Ah, to incorporate monetary policy together in bad exchange trade. Combine, combo. Uh. Okay, so this question, the US Central Bank intervenes and conducts expansionary monetary policy. So what is the intention of expansionary monetary policy? To increase aggregate demand. And what are the tools to achieve that? Higher money supply and lower interest rate. Remember this? Okay. So, we talk about interest rate here. What flow is this? Capital flow. Right. So, if the interest rate of the country becomes lower, do you still want to keep the money in the banks, in the banks of the country? You don't want, yeah? So people will start to cash out their money to save their money in other banks. Like for example, let's say this is Indian market, Indian country, right? So Indian will cash out their money from Indian financial institutions and put their money in, for example, US. Okay? So therefore, you know, they will demand for US dollars more, okay? And foreigners, foreigners will not want to save their money in the U Indian also because the interest rate is so low, okay? So now we, let's say, now we want to incorporate the graph, all the graph together. Okay, so let's say I want to show the expansionary monetary policy graph. Then later on, okay, I want to show the exchange rate graph. Okay, so remember when we say that, when is the situation in which the central bank would use expansionary monetary policy? Recession, very good. Okay, let's start to draw one by one first, okay? So let me just erase this one. Okay, question three. Let's just show the graph for expansionary monetary policy first. Let's try to draw all the three things together. The money market, investment curve, and ADS. Okay, so let's draw one by one. This like recap, law. like at least you learn all the three graphs together. Money market, this is the interest rate, this is the quantity of money. Okay, you have ADS at the bottom. So this is the price level, real GDP. Okay, then let's say, your aggregate demand curve, SAS. Now we start with a uh, recessionary gap. Okay, like this. Yes. Point A. P0. Okay, at this Y0. This is the YF. Okay, so then we draw our Money supply curve as well. 
like this. At first, it's this quantity with this money demand. Okay, this money demand, this money supply. At first, at point A. Label everything first. Okay, then continue to draw your investment saving curve, investment curve. Origin, okay, interest rate. Uh, this quantity of investment. Okay, so this is the investment curve. I, okay. So at this interest rate, all connected one, you see, all connected. At point A, at this interest rate, and at this amount of investment. Okay, very nice, three graph. So you follow this one, no need to follow this one because this is a bit complex, you know, when you want to look into that. So we try to draw it ourselves. Okay, we try to draw it ourselves like this first. Then later on, we want to show the exchange rate. Exchange rate I draw here. We want to draw the exchange rate graph. We first prepare all the graph first. Wow, very exciting, so many graph. Okay, so here we, and we our unit is how much of Indian rupee per US dollars. Okay, so therefore, this will be my quantity of US dollars. So everything is about US dollars. Demand for US dollars and supply of US dollars. And at first, it's at point A. Again, let's just simply put up a value. Maybe let's say, for example, 82 at this quantity. Okay, for graph. Ooh. Okay, we draw one by one now. Okay, so expansionary monetary policy is to increase the money supply and to reduce the interest rate in order to increase the aggregate demand. Okay, so therefore money supply increase. So still remember how they increase the money supply? Sell or buy? OMO market. Because <laughs> someone says sell, someone say buy. Think properly. Okay, so first of all, now money supply, I want to shift right words. Think properly. Okay, I want to increase money supply. So we have central bank, we have normal banks or people or public. Yeah, I need to buy ma. So central bank will need to buy, okay? So central bank will need to buy bonds, okay? When they buy, they will give them money, okay? So then banks will need have more money, higher money supply, okay? Higher borrowing. Then only can have higher consumption and investments. Okay, central bank give banks money. So that means central bank buy bonds. Lah. Okay, so they buy. So that's how they increase the money supply. That means haven't started studying yet. Ah. So we call it as open market operations. Okay, this one should come out. Ah. I think she already mentioned this a lot of times already. Ah. You, need talk, you need to talk about the the instruments, open market operations, bank rate, and the cash reserve, uh, the reserve. <laughs> okay. So now, your interest rate fall already. Okay, interest rate fall. This quantity. Okay, so you can see here one thing as well, lower interest rate. What about the asset demand for money? Interest rate becomes lower. That means that new bonds will follow a lower interest rate. Not so nice. People prefer old bonds. 
So the demand for old bonds will increase. Higher price for old bonds. Okay. Higher asset demand for money. Okay. So if let's say I want to be more specific for this one, remember the three methods. Like for example, the three methods that we learned here, last time we learned to increase money supply, to achieve expansionary monetary policy, the three details. The details, remember? Okay, so just now open market operation, we say one already, the first one, okay? In open market operation, central bank will buy bonds, okay? So that money will go into the money will go to the banks. Okay, second reserve. What about the cash reserve? Reserve should increase or decrease. The reserve should be kept by the bank. Yes, decrease so that banks will have more money to borrow. Okay, so banks will have more money to loan out. Okay, what about the bank rate? Or remember what we call as the overnight policy rate. Bank rate. Or overnight policy rate. Up or down? Down. Okay. So therefore, the cost of borrowing becomes lower as well. Okay. Remember, must talk about cost of borrowing. You must be able to expand all this. Huh? So now you know that this will surely come out already. Ma. So at least you prepare. Or make sure you watch back the recording of the monetary policy. Or at least... Okay, we are being specific. You see, this is a recap already. Details here. Why right, details here? Okay, so interest rate fall already. So now I can reflect this on investment curve. So interest rate fall here already. This is an investment curve. So therefore, lower investment will result in, lower interest rate will result in higher investment. Okay? So to point B. Okay, so you can see lower interest rate, higher investment. This is being shown in a investment curve. Okay, so interest rate lower, so people will start to spend more, correct? Consumption will rise. Investment will rise. It stimulate the economy, right? So we can show this on ADS market. So assuming it shift to the full employment. Okay, from point A, move to here. A shortage and then push the points to this equilibrium. So end up at P1, higher price level. Okay, inflation. And then result in full employment in the end. Okay, so you can see we show the impacts on money market, on investment curve, and on ADS curve. And now we can show it on exchange rate. Okay, so lower interest rate. Lower interest rate means what? Means that lower returns. Okay, lower returns or lower cost of borrowing, but let's focus on returns because I want to show this on exchange rate. Okay, so therefore what happened is lower returns if you save your money in these local banks. So therefore, here, what happened is uh, you can see that Indians, this, this is Indian market. So what happened is uh, they will not want to save their money in the, in the India anymore. They want, to save in, they, they want to save money in somewhere else, for example, US. So the demand for US dollars will increase. Okay, so demand for US dollars increase. So we shift the demand curve first to the right. Okay, to point B here. You must be able to put all this into words. Huh? I provided for you. You can see all these sentences here. But just but it's just that now I expect everything uh through through you. Okay. Oh yeah. So demand. Hey, what is the question again? US. Hey, US. Sorry, not not India. Sorry, US. UN. Uh, US implement expansionary monetary policy. So sorry, sorry. Not not shift demand here. My bad. My bad. Hold on. This exchange. So 
we are talking about uh, lower interest rate in US. Sorry, my bad. So lower interest rate in US. So all this in US. Okay. Sorry, the ballet. I, I misread the question. So US intervenes expansionary monetary policy. My bad. So therefore means that, okay, means that now uh, US offer lower interest rate, lower returns. So therefore, you know, US people will not want to save their money in US banks. They would rather to save it somewhere else, like for example, in India. Okay, the ballet, my bad. Okay, so therefore what happened is uh, US people will supply US dollars because they, want to, they don't want to save in the US anymore because of lower return in US banks. Okay, so therefore supply of US dollars increases. Okay, they don't want to save in US bank. Point B. Okay, so they like D1 at this quantity. Okay, and you and Indian people, they are okay to save their money in their banks. They don't need to go and save money in overseas banks anymore. So they will not demand for uh, foreign currency. So the demand for US dollars will fall. Yeah, my bad just now. Okay, so to point C here. So quantity is here, and now it becomes 80. Okay, so one thing you can see over here is that the price of rupee gets lower and lower. Means what? So let's put some conclusion here. Rupee appreciates because now Indians can use less rupee to buy each US dollars, whereas US dollars will depreciate because each US dollars will buy less as less and less of Indian rupee. Okay, so that's the outcome. So remember, just now one mistake that I did is that I saw wrongly. I thought that it's the India that uh, reduced the interest rate and engaged the expansionary monetary policy, but it's the other way around. It's the US, okay? It's the US that do the expansionary monetary policy. So therefore, I label here US. So it's the U.S. that uh, did the expansionary monetary policy. So at the end, there's the outcome. Okay. So therefore, lower interest rate here is U.S. Okay, so therefore, lower returns in the U.S. bank. Okay, so this is why supply of U.S. dollars rises because no one wants to save money in U.S. banks. And for Indian people, they okay to save their money in their bank, so their demand for US dollars also decline. So that's a secondary impact. Okay, so therefore, that's the outcome for this question three. Wow, it's like a masterpiece, right? The photograph in one page. Investment demand? Want to talk about the like lower, lower this one, uh, yeah. uh, in the monetary policy part, only one small part here. Actually, this one, uh, you only learn half of it. Actually, the whole thing is called investment saving curve. Investment curve is downward sloping, saving curve is upward sloping. So, you will combine together and form it an IS curve. IS curve is something that you will learn in the medium macro. Uh, but here, it's only introducing, introducing you what is investment curve for you, only half of it. Just, uh, uh, this one, only. Just yes, yes. Next, Sam you will learn investment saving curve. Yeah. And then after you understand investment saving curve, you will understand LM curve. So it's combined with ISLM uh, next, next semester. Yeah. Okay, this is the answer for question number three. Okay. All good. Let's continue. So you all must read the sentences. Huh? I put the sentence for you to read. That's how you explain. You don't assume the word. You just draw everything like that. No need to explain. Okay, you must explain. Huh? Okay, question two, media review. So remember, your, your last two chapters are for your section C media review, basically. So that's why here they give you another example of media review here. Okay. Okay, you read. You quickly read through it first. Oh. One minute and then we will discuss. Just glance through it.
so here you can see some initiative that Malaysian they encourage uh, state link firms okay like those firms oversee to repatriate repatriate means send back okay to send back send the foreign investment income and convert into the local currency more consistently so send money back home la, basically and you can see that our currency being dragged down because of few reasons here you can see the reasons here also it has been dragged down because of us they keep having high interest rate and because of the middle east tension the war okay and also the sluggish economic outlook for china Okay, all this will have an impact on our currency, actually. We were going to talk about that in a while. Okay, let's have a look into the questions. Okay, question number one. What factors contributed to the recent weakness of the Malaysian ringgit according to the newspaper article? So, weaker ringgit Malaysia. So basically, these are the three reasons. Uh, but we need to explain how. Okay, like for example, first one. Malaysian ringgit has weakened due to a strong US dollars. Why? Because they keep having higher interest rate. So means what? It means our local people will prefer to save their money in US banks instead of saving money in the Malaysian banks. So even foreign investors, they will, they will rather to save their money in, uh, in the US financial institution as well. So therefore, you know, uh, less demand for our Ringgit Malaysia and high supply of Ringgit Malaysia. So causing our Ringgit Malaysia to weak, become weaker. Okay, next one, geographical, uh, ge geopolitical tensions in the Middle East have heightened investor demand for safe haven assets, you know, so therefore, they will rather to uh, keep US dollars, you know, so they do, want, they do not want to keep other currency, so that depreciates our ringgit Malaysia as well. Malaysia economic ties with China, its largest trading partner, have also impacted ringgit's value. Why? Because when, con when countries like China is not doing good, okay, China usually buy a lot of our country's export. So if they're not doing good, and we will be affected as well. Okay, so the country's sluggish economic growth in China has led to reduce demand for Malaysian products. So again, affecting our foreign currency inflow as well. Okay, so that's how it causes our ringgit Malaysia to become weaker. Remember, you must be able to really explain. You know? So you see, all these are the key points, but you must be able to explain. Like for example, the first point here, we talk about you say that uh uh Malaysian ringgit becomes weaker because strong US dollar they keep having high interest rate so this is why you know this can result in uh higher uh high sorry uh higher supply of ringgit Malaysia to demand for US dollars right so it will cause higher supply of ringgit Malaysia to demand US dollars because US, US keep having high interest rate and at the same time okay people people do not want to uh people do not want to demand for ringgit Malaysia anyway so lower lower supply of US dollars to demand ringgit Malaysia so you know the supply of US dollars are way less so if I draw this on the diagram Okay, if I draw this on the diagram, regular Malaysia per US dollars, this is the one that I show law. Uh, demand for US dollars rise, supply of US dollars fall. You make sure you know which part that you need to show in the graph. Huh? So that means if I want to draw the graph, if it's uh, ringgit Malaysia per US dollars, that means you see 
from a U.S. perspective. So demand for U.S. dollars keep rising. Supply of U.S. dollars, okay, keeps declining. Mm. And you can see the outcome already. Then you can see the outcome in which you can see Ringgit Malaysia depreciates and U.S. dollar appreciates. Make sure you know which direction you draw. Huh? So I show you the answers verbally uh, in words. You try to draw in the diagram, then you know already. Okay? Every time, you must get this part right. If you get this part right, you will never get mistake. MYL per US dollars. So therefore, the graph is about US markets. So therefore, the demand for US dollars rises because US give higher interest rate. And supply of US dollars fall because US people will prefer to put their money in their bank so they don't need to supply their US dollars at all. Okay, so ringgit Malaysia depreciates, US dollar appreciates. You draw the graph, you will see the result. Looks easy when you try to draw and when you try to analyze, make sure you draw wrong, you make sure you draw correctly. Students usually will draw wrongly, they will go and draw the Malaysian perspective, they go and draw higher supply of ringgit Malaysia and lower demand for ringgit Malaysia. Wrong way, you want. But you can put that in sentences. That's not wrong. That's your explanations. But when you draw the graph, you follow this unit. It's going to be very challenging, huh? this part. Okay? So this is why, like what we say last week, uh, the only way for our central bank to actually avoid this, to, make, uh, to, en to, uh, to ensure that our regulation not weakening so much, is to consistently increase our overnight policy rate so that at least our that's why I say that every time when US increase the interest rate, we will follow as well. So that we will try to avoid that our bring it Malaysia to depreciate so much. Okay, we don't want that to happen. Okay, now next question. How might the action taken by the Bank of Malaysia as described in a newspaper article prompting state linked firms? To repatriate, that means send back the foreign investment in earnings and convert them more regularly into the local currency. Local currency means ringgit Malaysia. They encourage all the foreign firms in other countries to send their money back home. How is this going to help ringgit Malaysia? Okay, we can try and see. Okay, now let's say I want to draw this diagram. How what is the unit going to be? What's the unit? Again, this Malaysia ma ringgit Malaysia per US dollars. Again, looks easy. Later, when you do it yourself, you can get it right or not. So, let's see how is that going to help our ringgit Malaysia. So, first, get the units right. So Malaysian, right? So how much ringgit Malaysia do I need to buy one US dollars? So this is about quantity of US dollars. So my demand and supply is about US dollars. Okay, let's say we first start, let's, let's follow the values here. Uh, let's start with 4.5, okay? 4.5. The value you can give yourself, huh? so this is 4 ringgit 50 cent per 1 US dollars at this quantity. Okay, so now uh, we the Malaysian government, okay, encourage the foreign firms to send the money back home. So in order for these foreign firms to send their money back home, what should they do? They need to supply US dollars. Okay, they need to supply US dollars to demand Ringgit Malaysia to send profits back to Malaysia. Yeah, you want to send to Malaysia, ma, so you need the local currency. So you supply US dollars because you're in US to demand Ringgit Malaysia, then only you can send the profits back to Malaysia. Okay, so supply of US dollars. Rises. Okay, supply of US dollars rises. 
So point A to point B to this quantity. And now four ringgit 20 cent to buy one US dollar. So do you see the impact? What is the impact? So by using this initiative, okay, it actually creates a large supply of US dollars and that's going to affect our ringgit Malaysia. How? You see from here, you can see one thing is, okay, ringgit Malaysia appreciates because now less ringgit Malaysia is needed to buy one US dollars and also US dollar depreciates because of the large outflow or large supply of the US dollars itself. And that's the outcome. And that's how this initiative will, will help our ringgit Malaysia a bit by causing our ringgit Malaysia to appreciate. Okay, with this inflow of supply. Time flies. We come to the end of the class already. Oof. Oh, yo. <laughs> so gamtong, ah. <laughs> oh, just like a few weeks ago, we start the class only. <laughs> So you see, last two chapters, uh, there are more graphs. Uh, it will be coming out in your section C. And but whatever it is, right, the monetary policy part is very important. You see that in, e, in section A and section C because it, it can come out in section A. Section A, you will have monetary policy. Section C, you will have that as well because I showed you just now, right, the four graphs combined together. Uh, the masterpiece. So you see, it can be combined all together. So this is why that monetary policy, you cannot skip law, okay? So therefore, that one is very important. Well, last class ready. Okay, so these are the questions that you need to know for today's tutorial. Make sure that you analyze correctly because you get the unit wrong, the whole thing will be gone already. Then if everything wrong, the whole section C, you get zero, zero mark already. <laughs> okay, so very, very important. Okay, you need to make sure that the quotation is right. Yeah. Okay, let me stop recording.